Today we are going to see the steps involved in the design procedure of journal bearing. In problems of journal bearing, following data is usually given to us. We require radial load acting on the bearing denoted by W. The speed of the journal denoted by capital N is given to us and the diameter of the journal denoted by capital D is also given to us. Friends, in this discussion, I will use the following data denoted by red color to explain various steps involved in the design procedure. So let's begin the design procedure. So in this first step, we will assume the L by D ratio as shown here. Capital L is the length of the bearing and capital D is the diameter of the journal. Here are some points to be kept in mind to assume the L by D ratio. The value of L by D ratio lies between 0.5 to 2 for journal bearings. For heavy load application, L by D ratio lies between 1 to 2 and for light load application, L by D ratio lies between 0.5 to 1. But in most of the engineering applications, the L by D ratio used is 1. So we will initially assume the value of L by D ratio in our discussion as 1 as shown here. In step number 2, we will calculate length of bearing using assumed value of L by D ratio and diameter of the journal provided as shown here. Length of the bearing is calculated as 60 mm. See on the right side. In step number 3, we will find unit bearing pressure by using this formula. Here, capital W is radial load, capital D is general diameter and L is the bearing length. So, calculate unit bearing pressure as shown here. See the pointer. In step number 4, we will assume bearing material. For example, we can assume Babbitt bearing as bearing material for most of the engineering applications. Then find out radial clearance C based on the bearing material using the data given below in the box. This data can be seen from any design data book. You can assume any value of radial clearance lying between these two limits given for the Babbitt bearing if you have selected Babbitt as the bearing material. On right side, we have calculated the value of radial clearance C numerically. You can see this here. Small r is the radius of the journal can be taken as 30 mm because in our, in our discussion, we are using the diameter of, general, of the journal as 60 mm. So radius will be 60 divided by 2 is equal to 30 mm. So radial clearance is calculated as shown for Babbitt bearing. You can see this. In next step, we will find minimum fluid film thickness denoted by H min using this empirical relation as shown here. In next step, we will calculate the ratio of minimum fluid film thickness to the radial clearance by taking the value of H min and C from previous step as shown here. In step number 7, we will find bearing performance parameter using the table of performance parameter taken from the design data book. For example, our H min by C ratio is 0.4 in our discussion and L by D ratio is assumed as 1 in step number 1. So from step number 6 and 1, we have calculated H min by C ratio and L by D ratio in our discussion. Now corresponding to H min by C ratio is equal to 0.4 and L by D ratio is equal to 1, we will find all the performance parameter as shown by yellow color here and write them down in this box separately because they will be used in further discussion. Here CFB is coefficient of friction variable taken from the table and is given by formula R by C into F where F is the coefficient of friction. This CFB is used to find out the coefficient of friction in the bearing that we will see in the later part of our discussion. Here F dot V that is the FB is the flow variable given by formula Q by RC 
एन एल यर क्यू इज द रेट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ द लिब्रिकेंट दिस फ्लो वेरिएबल यूज टू फाइंड आउट द रेट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ द लिब्रिकेंट इन द बियरिंग यर कैपिटल एस इज द समर फीड नंबर यूज टू फाइंड आउट द विस्कोसिटी ऑफ द ऑयल यूज इन द बियरिंग सिमिलरली पी मैक्स बाई पी रेशियो इज यूज टू फाइंड मैक्सिमम फ्लू फ्रेम प्रेशर इन द बियरिंग इन स्टेप नंबर एट फाइंड एवरेज टेम्परेचर ऑफ द ल्यूब्रिकेटिंग ऑयल डिनोटेड बाई टी एवरेज यूजिंग इम्पेरिकल रिलेशन एज शोन ऑन राइट हैंड साइड वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द वैल्यू ऑफ द एवरेज टेम्परेचर एज शोन नोट हियर टी आई इज द इनलेट टेम्परेचर ऑफ द ल्यूब्रिकेंट टू द बियरिंग टेकिन एज थर्टी एट डिग्री सेल्सियस इफ नॉट गिवेन इन द प्रॉब्लम इन नेक्स्ट स्टेप वी विल फाइंड आउट विस्कोसिटी म्यू using the graphs available in the data books which shows relationship between the variation of viscosity with temperature for various types of oils for example if t average is equal to 40 degree celsius in our discussion as calculated uh, in the previous step okay in step number 8 we have calculated t average as 40 degree celsius and if we project a vertical line from t is equal to 40 degree celsius as shown and initially select a oil which has designation sae10 then viscosity corresponding to the sae10 at 40 degree celsius is shown by this horizontal line and viscosity will come out to be 40 centipoise in next step we will calculate some of feed number using this formula by putting the value of viscosity mu obtained in previous step you can see on right side we have calculated the summer feed number using the data as shown and it came out to be 0.3138 you can see this now we compare the value of the summer feed number obtained in the step number 10 with that obtained in the step number 7 from the table now because the value of summer feed number obtained in previous step as shown is 0.3138 is greater than that obtained in step number 7 which was 0.121 so the design is safe now suppose if value of summer feed number as obtained in step number 10 is coming out to be smaller than the value of summer feed number as obtained from the table in step number 7 then design is not safe and we have to go back to step number 9 and choose next lubricant oil that is sae20 oil and find out the viscosity of that sae20 oil corresponding to average temperature on x axis and use that value of the viscosity in step number 10 to find out the summer feed number now in step number 12 step number 11 we will find the coefficient of friction using cfv value as shown here in example using data obtained from the table in step number 7 in step number 12 we will find friction power loss denoted by capital p and lubricant flow rate denoted by capital q using these two formulas and data shown on the right side of the screen in step number 12 you can calculate maximum fluid flow pressure and side leakage of the lubricant using the ratio of p max by p and q s by q obtained from the step number 7 friends i have done a numerical problem on this topic that link the link of that is pasted in the description box so you can see that problem also i have solved that problem with a different method so friend this was all for